Upon awakening at dawn, the main protagonist looked out of the window at the rain-soaked streets below, her mind still processing the unfolding events. The conversation with the paladin now felt like a distant reverie, an unlikely reality. Even when it was time to prepare for the journey, the young lady remained lost in thought, oblivious to Lily's words. The memories of the evening were vivid, yet Renee hadn't consumed any alcohol for such clarity. Frustrated, the protagonist's companion recounted Renesha's conversation with Elvinores, confirming the authenticity of her memories. Venturing outside, they noticed the knights, affected by the previous night's drinking, making their expedition unlikely to succeed. Unexpectedly, the protagonist's gaze met the paladin commanders, initially dismissed as an illusion. Lily noticed these peculiar events and questioned her friend about her growing closeness to elven heiress. Surprisingly, René called out to Vice Commander Turek of the Nickel Knights, who, though intimidating from an outsider's perspective, was genuinely kind. Concerned about the protagonist's well-being, Turek inquired about her condition. Conversations with the knight were usually effortless. However, he also requested the young lady to hasten her pace, as their detachment needed to follow the healers closely for protection. Cavert, in a foul mood due to the rainy night, couldn't sleep in such weather. As the knight recounted his commander's unpleasant behavior, Cavert approached from behind, visibly irate. Hearing himself discussed further infuriated Cavert. Unable to extract information from his soldier about the conversation with the priestess, he ended the discussion and escorted the soldier away. More likely, his exasperation could drive him to harm the healer, who was progressing at a laboriously slow pace. Unable to master her own body, especially under the watchful gaze of the bloodthirsty Reaper, it remained perplexing why René was burdened with such weariness, for she had managed to mend her legs somewhat while resting at the villa. Moreover, the main protagonist found herself intermittently distracted by extraneous sounds, such as the rustling of leaves which only further impeded her progress. Unexpectedly, Turek startled the priestess, instructing her to turn around. She even briefly believed that an adversary lurked behind her, but in reality, the man was pointing to a white rabbit. The distressed woman was so terrified that she even imagined a shadowy figure behind her when, in actuality, no one was present. She was accompanied by an entire squad of nickel knights and cavert, who would dispatch anyone attempting to assail them, as had occurred in a prior ambush. Recalling this, the young lady finally felt secure. The following night brought forth another heavy rain, prompting the main heroine to seek out the bloodthirsty reaper and aid him in finding sleep, hoping that this gesture would ameliorate his ill temper. She could not precisely determine his whereabouts at such a late hour, as she had not ventured to speak with him, either on the way or upon arrival at the camp, but she had a conjecture. Last time, when René had encountered the man during her nocturnal stroll, he had likely decided to patrol the vicinity around the tents, and consequently interrogated her at that moment. Thus, at present, he was most likely on duty, for he could not sleep anyway, and the priestess had been correct. The main heroine peered into the sentry tent and beheld Kavar, whose mere presence made her feel quite uneasy. Nonetheless, she endeavored to maintain her composure. After several minutes of awkward silence, the heir to the duchy eventually inquired about the reasons behind the healer's visit. With a radiant smile, Renesha offered her assistance completely free of charge. Despite all, the man declined a response that left the main protagonist in shock, for she discerned no objective reasons for him to dislike such an offer. In truth, Caver could not consent to rest even briefly, for he had already relieved the sentry and was obliged to safeguard the camp from potential peril. The young lady insisted that Cavert accept her offer. When questioned about the reasons for her late visit, she responded candidly, stating that she simply could not sleep. Following the ambush, the priestess remained unable to fully regain her composure. She had confided in one of the commanders about it, and now, with trepidation, she revealed the same to another fearing a negative reaction that fortunately did not materialize. Perceiving the man's silence as agreement, she resolved to commence the requisite ritual. Yet she soon realized that several factors in the vicinity could negatively impact the sensitive slumber of the ducal heir. Nevertheless, he assured her that he found no harm in extraneous sounds, at least as long as the priestess refrained from speaking. While the commander of the Nicolmites dozed in the sentry's chair, she studied his countenance, which resembled a work of art, albeit with a slightly eerie undertone. Despite the considerable passage of time, she did not rush to awaken him, for he had been deprived of rest for far too long. Suddenly, a cold breeze swept in from outside, causing a noticeable drop in temperature within the tent. 
therefore it was necessary to shield Cavert. However, the blankets were situated some distance away. The task was far from straightforward, for even the slightest noise could rouse the ducal air. Nevertheless, after much contemplation, the young lady found a solution to the predicament, merely employing more of her divine power in the process. All went off successfully, and the task proved to be quite manageable, save for the challenge posed by the man's broad shoulders. Once the priestess had achieved this, she regarded the commander of the detachment. He was no longer asleep, but instead observed her actions. The countenances of the main protagonist and Cavert found themselves in close proximity, which alarmed the priestess. However, she hoped to elucidate the motivations behind her actions. Surprisingly, he remained exceedingly composed, despite René being in a state of panic, assuring him that she would depart as soon as she fetched another blanket to prevent him from chilling. Nevertheless, he did not release the young lady. On the contrary, he began to gently hold her hands and explained what had truly disrupted his slumber. The commander of the nightly detachment had grown accustomed to hearing the maiden's breath during sleep, which had aided his rest for many years. When it began to recede, it deprived him of tranquility. To avoid exacerbating the situation, Renesha still intended to depart promptly. However, the man beseeched her to stay with him and rested his head on her shoulder, falling asleep naturally. Cavard awoke from such a nightmare, yet it was morning. Additionally, the healer was not merely near him. She had maintained her position to avoid disturbing his slumber. Initially, the young woman was greatly distressed, believing herself responsible for the bloodthirsty reaper's restless night, despite her nearly motionless state. As soon as he released her hand, the main heroine collapsed to the floor, her body somewhat numb from maintaining the same posture for an extended duration. Rising from her position, the ducal heir decided to apologize to René for compelling her to remain with him. This, however, terrified the hapless woman even more. She swiftly rose from the floor and dashed away without further ado, making her escape before she could hear what else the man had to say. In reality, the man who had always been aloof toward others suddenly expressed gratitude to the obedient follower, who didn't even hear his words of thanks to completion. Lily reminded her companion of the need to send a small group of warriors on a reconnaissance mission. However, the latter was too fatigued and lost in thought. Unfortunately, the young woman was about to encounter the Nickelmites and their commander, and she wasn't prepared for such a meeting. She even believed that the man might have become even more irritable and hostile due to her unintentional interruption of his sleep. Unexpectedly, René crossed paths with Caver once more, and he appeared entirely transformed from the previous night. Notably, his condition had unmistakably improved. His countenance no longer appeared as drained as before. This gave the young lady a sense of having made a worthwhile visit. Filled with newfound confidence, the healer decided to boast to her friend about how she had shielded all the knights from the commander's wrath. However, she did so too loudly and pointed directly at the man, who certainly noticed. Attempting to amend the situation, the main heroine altered her hand gesture to a more courteous one and paid a compliment to the well-rested visage of Cavert. Nonetheless, he simply departed without uttering a word to the priestesses regarding their peculiar conversation. Previously, this individual had always regarded the main heroine as a peculiar girl, but now he looked at her with a gaze of shared misfortune, as neither of them had been able to sleep well of late. Lily scolded her friend for the comments she had made to the bloodthirsty reaper, deeming them highly inappropriate given his condition. Unexpectedly, Elvin Urs approached them. Realizing that René appeared quite unwell and surmising that she was ailing, he hurried to fetch some medicine. The young woman asked him not to do so and explained the situation regarding her insomnia. However, the man argued, greatly concerned for the healer's well-being and unwilling to see her fall seriously ill, likely due to her frail appearance. She simply smiled and reassured the worried elven man that there was no need for concern about her divine power. Suddenly, his countenance underwent a change, significantly darkening for an entirely inexplicable reason, causing the healer to worry. He made an effort to conceal this, immediately breaking into a smile and reassuring the main heroine that nothing dreadful had occurred. Later, a group of scouts returned, and the healers attended to the wounded. Initially, they utilized individuals from the state temple for this purpose, and therefore René was not among them. Three of the injured were in particularly critical condition, finding it difficult even to move, which might necessitate the assistance of the main heroine. 
The young lady had been napping while seated by the crates, having found a comfortable spot for herself and covering herself with a blanket to prevent any chills. Unexpectedly, she was awakened by a healer with whom she had previously clashed. The young man informed Renee that the scout detachment had returned, which alarmed the young woman. The main heroine quickly noticed that the camp was quite noisy, implying that there were likely a considerable number of wounded this time. Although Renee's strength had been restored, she had no great desire to work with the injured, as she was fearful of witnessing their horrific injuries. The young man asked the young woman to remain in sight of the others so that they could call upon her, if necessary, to aid in treatment, despite the lingering tension between the two due to recent events. On the day when the commander had instructed her to help an injured soldier, she herself was at a loss. The vice commander of the paladins explained the situation to them, mentioning that aside from the three severely wounded individuals, there were only a few with minor injuries. One healer was sufficient to assist the injured, so it was once again necessary to decide who would go to help them, someone from the state temple or the main heroine. Varsi, it seemed, was no longer angry with the young woman and had no intentions of competing with her. However, he had now chosen to personally go and aid the warriors, allowing her to rest for a while. Brought relief to the main heroine, since she had previously at times felt a heavy heart due to what had transpired between her and this man. Naturally, if the situation had been more dire, they would have called upon Renesha for her greater divine power. From the outset, it had never been a competition. It was merely a practical solution to the problem. She desperately longed for some rest at this moment, yet she understood that others did not spare themselves and were doing everything for the common cause. Therefore, she had to invest all her efforts to achieve the necessary outcome, and she too had to remain on standby for emergencies. One of Renée's patients sought to reassure the young lady by suggesting that the scale of the military actions was not very significant, and therefore there shouldn't be many casualties. Despite the fact that this knight himself was constantly sustaining injuries, the young man harbored a decidedly optimistic outlook, believing that the enemies were feeble since they had only managed a single ambush, which might have been due to the complex terrain. However, this did not convince the main heroine that everything would be fine as long as the war remained ongoing. Danger still loomed for the people. Such discussions led the warrior to contemplate the deceased mercenary, suspecting that the priestess still held thoughts for this man. In reality, this was not the case, and it was remarkable how, after a few days, everyone ceased to think of him. Now she merely wished that no more people would be injured, and even this knight should exercise caution to avoid constant injuries. In all likelihood, those in such critical circumstances have a habit of forgetting the unpleasant moments to continue living, regardless of anything, and René now had that same inclination. The slain young man would not be recorded in the annals of the Empire. Nobody would even remember his name. For the nation, the only priority was to subdue the kingdom that had invaded them and expand their territories. Lost in thought, the young woman completely forgot about her own safety and nearly fell. A man with a handsome countenance was about to assist her, but her friend was the first to act. Lily caught her companion, and now their posture resembled a scene from a romantic film, except the character was clearly not the right one. It was then that she realized how foolish she must have appeared, and promptly apologized to the paladin commander, for the healer had indeed forgotten the reason for the reduced pace. The man continued to smile at her, which helped her feel better. Therefore, once they reached the camp, the young woman would be able to rest and sleep properly. At first, René believed that everything was fine, but afterwards she noticed that Elvenuras did not change his facial expression at all. He was evidently ignoring the young lady, and he outright refused to answer any questions regarding this. A healer couldn't fathom what might have offended the man, but now, looking at him, she felt worse rather than better. Anime and Manhua Enthusiasts If you enjoyed today's content and want to stay updated on the latest and greatest in the world of anime and Manhua, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below.